two trees that people often confuse are the soapberry and the chinaberry. Now the soapberry, or more correctly, the western soapberry like we've got right here, is a desirable native species that makes a great small to medium sized landscape tree. I sort of cringe a little bit whenever I hear someone refer to these as china berries, and that's because the china berry is a lot less desirable and it's got several problems. Right here we have a china berry tree, and you can see that it does have attractive dark green glossy foliage, sort of looks like the house plant known as the china doll, and a lot of people like to plant the tree because of its dwarf dense umbrella type growth habit, but it's really not a tree that we recommend. The china berry grows pretty fast, so it has weak, brittle wood, and it breaks up a lot whenever we have snow, ice, or wind storms. We even get a lot of branches dying back on the china berry whenever we have a really cold winter. The plant or the tree has all parts that are poisonous. They're not very long lived in the landscape, but probably the worst thing that the china berry has going for it is its weediness. The plants aren't native to this country. As the name implies, they are native to China and other Asian countries, but because they tolerate poor soils so well and they produce such an abundance of seeds and suckers, they've naturalized in warm areas pretty much worldwide. We see quite a few of these growing in the wild down in southeastern Oklahoma in certain spots where they're choking out some of the native vegetation. And Dr. Mike Durr from the University of Georgia talks about how in the southeastern United States, you rarely see a fence row that doesn't have a china berry seedling growing in it. The trees are spread around a lot because there are a number of birds and other wildlife that eat the fruit and then scatter the seeds. You can see some of the suckers right back here coming up where the, the roots have been disturbed by armadillos or other, other critters digging around, around this tree. So as you can see, the china berry has a lot of undesirable characteristics. The desirable and native soap berry doesn't look just a whole lot like the china berry, I don't think. You can see I've got leaves of, of each here. The uh, leaves of the china berry, well these are kind of wilted a little bit, have uh, dentations or jagged edges to their leaflets. And right here with the soap berry you can see they're more of a, has more of a smooth edge. Another big difference is that the leaves of the soap berry are only once compound, whereas the leaves of the china berry are twice compound. And we've talked about this on the show before. When you have compound leaves, again, this is one leaf. This entire structure is one leaf, and these are the leaflets. Right here with the china berry, this, this entire structure is one leaf. You can see where it came off the branch here. And again, these small structures are leaflets. But the pinnate, once pinnately compound soap berry only has one rachis, a little member that all these leaflets are attached to, whereas the china berry is going to have two. So it's twice compound or a bipinnately compound leaf. Another difference is the china berry has a terminal leaflet out here on the end. Here with the soap berry, they're just the two. There's no single leaflet that uh, terminates on the end there. If we had any fruit of the china berry, you would see that it's a, quite a bit smaller than the fruit of our soap berry. But right back here, you can see the fruit of the soap berry is about the size of small marbles. And right now, these are sort of green, but they will quickly become sort of a yellowish orange color. And up in this tree, also, you can a lot of the time see the berries of last year's crop. Right here you can see how dark they get because these have uh, hung on the tree from uh, summer of last year. So you can get two seasons of soap berries on, on the tree at the same time. Now if you're wondering about the name soap berry, it is true you can make soap from these berries. The Native Americans and the early settlers used to make soap from the fruit of the soap berry. The robins, a lot of the time, we'll see out here eating the fruit of our soap berries in the wintertime. They seem to just really love it. 
but uh, they don't spread it around and it doesn't become weedy like the china berry. The soap berry is a wonderful specimen for a landscape tree. They're very tough and they make a very small to medium sized tree. They get to be about 30 to 40 feet tall, so they're not going to get too large on you. They're, they're no stranger to tough conditions. They're native from Louisiana all the way to Arizona, so they perform quite well in all parts of Oklahoma. They are no stranger to tough conditions like drought or poor soils. They also don't have any pests, but it is common to see a lot of the red shoulder bugs either on or near the soap berries. And we've got some right down here on the ground that I'll have you take a look at. Right here we have a little red shoulder bug crawling around below the soap berry. You see they sort of look like a small squash bug or maybe a stink bug but uh, they're kind of silvery or gray in color and they've got the red shoulders. You can see those red markings on the shoulders and the eyes are red and they've got a little bit more red on, on uh, other parts of their bodies. A very similar insect is the box elder bug, but it's got a little bit different markings. Now, the red shoulder bugs don't harm the soap berry in any way. They just sample the fruits and they sort of just congregate on the trees or on the ground around the trees, but uh, they don't do any damage to the soap berries. Now, in some years, they are more abundant than others, and occasionally we'll get uh, lots of these that will sort of hang out around patios or, or near the home. So for that reason, you might want to position a soap berry a little bit of a ways away from the house. But even though they like to hang out on the patio or occasionally come into the home, the red shoulder bugs are quite harmless and they don't have any bad odor. They can just be a nuisance on those years when they're present in large numbers. Well, another thing to think about when you're sighting a soap berry on your property is that they don't like to have their roots disturbed. So for that reason, we don't want to put any flower beds beneath the canopy. Once those roots are cut, they'll start sending up a few suckers. So keep that in mind whenever you're placing a soap berry around your property. And hopefully the next time you see one of these trees, you'll recognize it as the western soap berry and not confuse it with the less desirable china berry.